All right, everybody. Happy Tuesday afternoon and welcome to the 87th episode of our mock interview and feedback series, a series we started in March of 2020 uh, during the pandemic, which seems like forever ago, but is also very much still with us. Um, as you know, if you're here for the very first time, this is the mock interview. We have a job seeker and we also have a recruiter slash career coach, Aaron Corey Hiramoto of careershakers.com to help us with these uh, with the mock interview. Uh, and so this mock interview is pretty simple. Today, we're featuring Sharice Hunter. She is a office manager, operations manager looking for her next role. Uh, the way this goes is pretty simple. Uh, Corey will ask the questions, Charisse will answer, and we'll get real-time feedback. And you as the audience can ask your own questions as well, either for clarity or if you want to throw in an interview question, which is always really fun. Corey, hand it over to you. Thank you, as always. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we like to keep it as interactive as possible. So feel free to utilize the chat function, whether you're in Zoom or on Facebook Live. If you have questions for me or you want questions that we should be practicing or just general questions about interviewing, put it in the chat. And then Albert and I will do our best to answer those. We want to make sure everyone gets as much value as possible. The job description we're going to be practicing today is for a office culture manager for Ubiquity Retirement and Savings. It's a company out here in the Bay Area. This is a pretty cool role because it's uh, an office manager role plus a uh, corporate culture role. So it's like a blend of um, both roles between HR as well as office management. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, basically how it's going to work is um, I'm going to ask an interview question as if I was an interviewer playing the role of a hiring manager. And then Charisse will answer the question as if it's a real interview. And then at the end of her answer, I'll put a different hat on. And then I'll basically be giving advice and feedback on to what we would potentially want to change and some good parts about her, her answer. So that those of you who are watching at home, uh, you can pick up some tips and tricks when it comes time to preparing for your next interview. But before we actually do the mock interview itself, I always want to make sure that um, our brave volunteers get a huge Round of applause for putting themselves out there. I know it can be super nerve wracking. It can be pretty nervous and daunting, but um, just think about it as if it's just you and me right here on this phone call. And everyone in the community is going to be showing you a lot of love and support for volunteering for both their education and entertainment purposes. And I also want to make sure that everybody who volunteers here gets a, a platform for themselves. And so, Sharice, why don't you just take the next minute or so, just introduce yourself to everybody, talk to them about what kind of jobs you're looking for, where, uh, what kind of companies, and then any, if, if anyone in the community is impressed by your background or has an opening, they can reach out to you for um, assistance. So um, take it away. That sounds good. My name is Sharice Hunter, and I've been job, job hunting for a little over three and a half, three months now. I'm looking mainly in roles in operations, project management, and administration. I have my MBA in nonprofit management, and uh, I am currently working as a um, freelance consultant for a nonprofit strategist slash CEO with social media management, as well as with um, developing a mobile app to help people start nonprofits. And I'm looking for my next role in um, educational nonprofits, colleges, universities, um, consulting firms, and I'm not looking at tech companies because I know they're struggling at the moment, but I'm looking for a company with like structure and someone where I can really grow my skills. And I have been getting interviews each and every week, but I'm using this time to work on my skills and practice. So that's a little bit about what I'm looking for. Excellent. And then um, I know you're based in the uh, Oakland area. Are you only looking for areas uh, for, for jobs in the Bay Area or are you open to moving as well? I am only looking for the Bay Area. I just want um, my focus right now will be to save money and start working on the steps to move out and be on my own. So that's where I am at the moment. Excellent. And also looks like you have an awesome shoe collection behind you as well. So oh, that's my brothers. I'm using <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the mock interview itself. But quick plug, uh, if any of you are looking to volunteer to uh, be in one of our weekly mock interview sessions, which are free, uh, please do reach out to me or Albert um, and we can go ahead and find a slot for you. Okay, Sharice, ready to get started? Yes, let's do it. 
<laughs> All right. Let's start with a nice warm up question here. Um, why don't you tell me about yourself? Sure thing. My name is my name is Sharice Hunter, and I currently work as a freelance consultant helping a nonprofit CEO slash strategist with social media management and developing a nonprofit app to help people around the United States start their own nonprofit organization. I have been doing this position for a little over seven and a half years on top of various full-time positions, including being a, a project manager for 100K Trees, as well as an operations specialist as office manager for Bayer Kohler. I am hardworking, adaptable, and dependable. When I'm not working, what I like to do for fun is I love to read and watch anime, movies, and really hang out with family and friends, and I really love learning new things. And I am interested in this position because I want to learn more about, um, I want to actually expand my skills in office management. I want to um, help different teams and really support the flow of the organization and learn more about retirement. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. Cool. So um, this is everyone's standard interview, like warm up question that most hiring managers, recruiters will ask you, right? Like, tell me about yourself, walk me through your resume. Another version of the same question is, why should we hire you? Um, all kind of basically should get the same answer, even though it's all different questions. So for those of you who are watching at home, uh, any type, any, anytime you get any of those questions, they're all basically the exact same answer here. And so, yes, you do want to give like a nice quick summary of your skill set, your roles that you've taken, but you also want to make sure that you're tailoring it towards the job that you're applying for. So in this case, it's a office manager plus people and culture. So ideally, you want to lead off by talking about all of your office management administration experience, as well as if you've done anything related to people, culture, and change. So um, you you save that for like the middle part of your, of your introduction, right? Um, but you immediately let off by saying you're doing a consulting project for a nonprofit, managing their social media and building an app, which yeah. is super awesome and really cool. But mm -hmm. when I'm hiring for a office manager slash culture manager, um, you just want to make your answer to be as tailored towards the job itself okay. right from the beginning. You can throw that in um, after you've already established your credibility as an office manager, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing that you did was uh, you uh, described yourself, right? You said, um, I'm hardworking and um, organized, and I forget the other adjective that you used, right? Um, dependable, was it? Dependable, exactly. Okay. Dependable. Super good at describe yourself. But what uh, is also very powerful is instead of telling, is showing, right? So instead of saying those three words, next next time, I want you to swap those out with very short examples that can mm -hmm. demonstrate to somebody that you're dependable, hardworking, and organized. Okay. Right? Especially if, especially if it relates to office management or uh, people and culture, right? So, so, so you could say, um, I've... I've uh, I have six years of office management and an and administrative experience at 100K Trees, as well as other companies um, at those companies. I've done blah, 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 blah. Right. Whatever this example is, will show that you are dependable. Um, in addition to that, I've also had the ability to work on blah, 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 blah. Right. Showing them that you're super hardworking and able to produce fantastic results for your company. Right. So instead of just being like, I'm hardworking, et cetera, you just give them a, a good example because it's the example that they're going to remember. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Very good start. All right. So next question. Sharice, can you tell me about a time where you had to deal with a difficult customer and how you handled that? Um, at Bear Kohler, I was in, I was responsible for managing the phones in the office and while working remotely. In the midst of handling different customer requests, there was a very angry and aggravated cold customer who was angry that her payment was missing. The way I handled it was I was extremely patient and I listened to her. I spent extra time out of my schedule to um, really... Um, learn about her requests, 
And then I quickly addressed the team and my supervisor and they were able to help take care of her um, need and expedite the trip. Okay. Um, and so uh, what, what did you do differently for this customer than what normally you would have done for other customers who call and complain? What I did differently for this customer is I took extra time to listen to her complaint. And um, I had to miss a few meetings to, to meet her need. And I prioritized her request over my duties. Um, why, why did you decide to help this customer and put in the extra effort um, as opposed to helping other customers with this level of support? Um, because this customer was very angry and um, impatient. Well, not impatient. That's not the best word. But this customer really needed to get her um, payment. And Bear Kohler promised to get the payment on time. And I was trying to be, I was utilizing professionalism in meeting her needs. Okay. And then what was the end result of um, uh, this interaction? Um, the end result was I was able to give her a date and a time that the check was coming. I also had her email address to follow up with them, follow up in writing of the timeline of that check being sent to her. And was that check sent to her? And did she uh, did she provide a, uh, a customer review of her service? She did not, but she was thankful that she got the payment that she needed. Okay. And then um, uh, what would you do differently next time? What I will do differently next time is just um, be prepared. So when a customer request comes in, just make sure to really try to be, because this was my first time handling a difficult customer. So just being more like open-minded, asking questions, listening closely, and really getting that request right away because it kind of took a minute to get that request because she was very angry and she yelled a lot. But um, I would have been a little more patient and asked like, how can I help you and what do you need? Okay, got it. So um, we're going to move to the feedback uh, section. So um, this question, uh, and, and the reason why I asked this one was because uh, if you're working um, in this office manager role, according to the job description, uh, you would also be at the front desk. So you would be the uh, first point of contact with customers and clients as they come in. And so uh, the expectation would be that you are able to provide excellent customer service, even in the face of a difficult or angry customer. Um, and so for, for, for any of you who are doing any like sales roles or customer service roles or support roles, you're going to get some form of, of this question. Tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult customer. Now, um, this is a this is a good example to use. Um, but I think what we would also like to hear is what made this particular customer so difficult as opposed to the other ones. Yes, she was angry. Um, but. I mean, then any customer who doesn't get their check that's supposed to get a check would be angry, right? So then what made this one so particularly uh, unique or difficult comparatively to the other ones, right? And maybe in this case, what was so difficult was that this was your first time handling this type of request um, because maybe it doesn't happen very often. But that's some context in which you should share, right? Um, sure. And then, uh, of course, you talk about how you make sure you listen to the customer and then you try to find a resolution. I also like that you highlighted that you went above and beyond in this particular case. Uh, you skipped some meetings in order to provide a good customer service experience um, for, for this person. Um, however, the part that I was also looking for, um, and as you can tell, based on the follow-up questions, these are components that you should already have in your story so that your answer is just a little bit longer and more comprehensive. But the one thing that would really, really enhance your answer and bring everything really good together is when, you, when, uh, when thinking about what you would do differently next time. Ideally, the answer that, that we would want to hear as like a hiring manager would be that you would try to identify why this problem occurred in the first place and then try to fix that problem so that other customers don't have the same occurrence again.
right? Now, maybe this was just the only time this has ever happened in the history of the company, then that's totally different, right? But um, it's still something to say that that you did as part of your story, right? You could say, well, and also it stood out to me that this customer was really, really angry and her not receiving this check or payment um, was going to have huge impacts on her personal life or ability to pay the rent or whatever. So it's kind of a big deal. And so I actually looked into the into our um, whatever rebate process, whatever refund process. And I actually found that there is some inefficiencies and there's reasons why customers besides her may actually call and, and complain that they're having this bad experience with our company. And so I went ahead and I whatever fixed that process. And now um, customers don't have this problem at all. And, you know, our customer satisfaction scores are gone up. You know, we're getting better reviews. Our Yelp scores are better. Our Google reviews are better. I have to handle less complaints. Well, I don't know. Right. Um, but that's like a, uh, like a very comprehensive solution. Uh, that if you said you had done, that would make you like one of the top candidates for this role right away, right? Because okay. it's not just thinking about, oh, I'm going to solve this problem right now that's in front of me. But if you're able to show them that you solve this problem, but you also think about the bigger picture too, that's going to make you really stand out as a top candidate. Sounds good. Thank you. So telling the story first and then telling how I am. Um took the steps to solve it and what I learned and how it helped the company in the long run. That's the situation, action, and results, right? Yep, that's right. That's so, right. Got it. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right. Let's try. Okay. Sharice, what are your strengths and what are some of your weaknesses? My strengths are I am um I'm very reliable. Um an example of that would be when I took on this extra role as a consultant, I make sure to have really close communication with the CEO slash strategist, giving weekly updates on our meetings, also when we are unable to meet, ensuring um clientele emails updating her and meeting deadlines. Um, I'm very adaptable. At Vera Kohler, when I worked there, we had to instantly work from home because of the pandemic. I quickly adapted my work tasks to work from home. I created an inventory system for staff to get the materials they needed to build a home office. I helped the board of directors organize their database, and I figured out how to manage taking care of customers while working remotely. And I am dependable. Um, an example of that would be at 100K Trees for Humanity. When I had to take on a lot of tasks for the founder and CEO, I created, I helped um, flesh out a Trello board, managing our tasks. I created press releases and organized the and took care of the grant database, managing grant deadlines and organizing them by the order of priority. And I helped onboard an intern as well as created a few guides for interns, volunteers and future project coordinators. I was very efficient with entailing strong communication, which made me more of a dependable employee. That, and that was, those are my strengths. As for my weaknesses, when you are a hard worker, there is, it's like a double-edged sword because I tend to bite more than I can chew, meaning taking on too many tasks and not taking on way too many tasks. And I am working to um, turn that into a strength by um, utilizing Google Suite to manage my to-dos, um, creating a routine to stay on top of my deliverables and um Organizing my tasks by the order of priority. My other weakness is I have a lot of pride in my work and I don't know how to say I don't know when I need to. And not everybody knows what to do. Um, the way I will turn that into, the way I'm working to combat that is really trying to work with the team, being close in communication. So like if I need help with some, on something, I will always 
reach out to my manager or teammate and make sure that we collaborate and uh, learn from them. And I also utilize Google to learn as well. So those are my strengths and weaknesses in short. All right. So those strengths are really good. And one thing that everyone can learn from what Charisse did is you give a very short example that shows the strength as opposed to just talking about it. So that is definitely the, like something that, 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 that everybody should be doing, regardless of whatever role it is that you're applying for, is making sure you have an example. And you'll notice that the examples that Charisse gave, they're not like three minutes each or five minutes each. It's just a very short um, star, right? Like, well, it's, it's not even a star. It's more like a... It's more like a R, I guess. Um, uh, so it doesn't have to be very long. And and she gave three three strengths, so three short examples. Now on the weaknesses side, um, this is something that I think uh, uh, people get different advice and opinions on, um, depending on like what you what videos you watch or what blogs you go to. Um, um, some of the older advices are that you should try to talk about weaknesses and and, and how they're turning into strengths. Um, I think that's kind of like the uh, the traditional approach to, to, to answering the question. Um, that can work. Uh, another way to also talk about your strengths is to um, highlight actual, um, areas of improvement, but ones that aren't super important to the job and, or don't directly conflict with the strengths in which you've just listed. So for example, um, one of your, one of your weaknesses, Charisse, actually directly conflicts with your strength, right? So, um, you said one of your strengths is that, uh, you're, you're adaptable and, and your other one is that you're dependable, right? Those were two of your strengths. And then you also admitted that one of your weaknesses is that because you work hard, you take on a lot more work mm -hmm. than sometimes you can handle. And yeah. your solution to that was basically to be more organized, right? You said, yes. So, so my solution to turn that into a strength is to be more organized using Google, uh, uh, like Google suite. Yes. Right. Yeah. So in that case, it actually conflicts with your strength now, which now makes me a little confused as the, as the, as, as the manager, right? Cause I was like, wait, well, Sharice just gave me two great examples of a time in which she's been reliable and organized. But now you're saying that your weakness is that you take on too much work, which makes you unorganized and not reliable. Mm. Right. So, um, I would, I would either choose a different one, choose a different weakness, um, or, uh, word it in a different way so that it doesn't directly conflict with some of your strengths. Right. Oh, okay. But I also like how you're talking about working to improve on those. Cause sometimes a lot of people will just say, oh, this is my weakness. And then they just stop talking. Right. And then you're like, okay, well, like, what are you doing to fix it? Like, I don't want to hire somebody who has weaknesses. Right. Um, so it's very good that you are talking about how you are working to turn that into a strength or basically just improve on that um, and anything that's that's easy easy i would say um you want your way of improving your weakness to be something measurable mm. right as opposed to just being like oh this is my weakness and to work on this i'm just not going to do that weakness anymore right because then you're like well that doesn't give me confidence that you're not going to do it again right, right. right. Um, so for those of you who are choosing a weakness make sure you actually have some form of like of 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 actually showing that you're working on it as opposed to just saying you're going to work on it. Okay. Now we have a fan submitted question that uh we will practice next. Sharice, how do you handle office politics as an office manager? I'm thinking for a second. Um let's see. Um, I believe at Barrett Kohler, there was a time that, um, they docked the pay of each team member. And I remember I was at level two and they docked it by like 5%. And to, and it was the first time that I really experienced this. Um, the way I handled it was I went along with it. However, it was very uncomfortable for me. So I think for me personally, 
I kind of just went with the flow, but I, I tried to follow, I tried to follow the rules. Okay, I honestly don't know how to answer this. I really don't know. It's hard. It's a tricky question. It's a tricky question. So um, generally, when, when people think of office politics, it's kind of like um, you, you, you could uh, you could think about it kind of like like office drama, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, or or like some something that's happening at the leadership level. If there's like some games kind of being played um, or like someone is. Not nefarious, but like trying to manipulate the system or manipulate somebody to kind of get something that they want. That's that that that's kind of what uh, like people generally think about when it comes to office politics, right? So, right. Um, right. have you ever encountered any situations like that at work? And then you can talk about how you tried to manage that as best as you could um, in your role. So, like conflict or drama. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Honestly, I never really experienced like conflict in the office, but I could talk about a time when I first started my um and you can help me with this because mm -hmm. I I've been trying to figure out how to answer this because I know a lot of interview questions are behavioral. Um back when I first started working as a consultant slash intern. Um, our fan life work. Okay, let's see. Work life balance is a huge, um, a huge value of mine. And the CEO slash strategist, she, um, just works, 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 but she doesn't really take that downtime. And I'm very family oriented, and we like to have like, we're very like, we like to celebrate holidays and stuff. And the work was starting to conflict with the holidays. So like we would have to do tasks on Christmas or New Year's and that was very important to me. Um, the thing, the way I handled it was I had to um, professionally pull her aside and kind of, and let her know like what days I could work and what days I couldn't. And the days that I um, did work, I make sure to put extra time into those tasks. So, um, to make me look like more of an efficient an employee. But at the same time, I established those boundaries to have those days off, to spend time with my family and my friends. So I don't know if that applies to what you're asking, but that's a story that I do want to talk about because I know a lot of um, companies really emphasize like work-life balance. And that's one of my very most important values as an employee. Um. It's it's a good story. I don't know if it falls under the definition of office politics. It could, it could. Um, like if it if it affected everybody, not just you, for example, yeah. Yeah. Um, then I could see how 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 that could apply as office politics. Um, but then that should be part of your story, right? Like as a office manager slash culture champion or culture manager, right? For this company, um, you wouldn't want to just solve this this political problem just for yourself, right. for example, right? right? So so in this case, you also want to talk about then how um, you brought it to the CEO's attention that, you know, it's not just you that would that has been feeling this way about burnout, as well as making sure that they're able to, to dedicate themselves towards the startup, but also um, not losing the personal touch of spending time with their family, particularly around major holidays like yeah. Christmas yeah. And, and New Year's. Right. So then you could talk about how uh, you were able to educate and change the, the corporate culture for everybody. Right. At that company, not just yourself. Yeah. Because it's like yeah. when you're an office manager, you're a team player. You try to make things organized and fair for the company. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as as you told the story so far, it just focuses more on you. Right. You were like, I, I pulled them aside and I told them that like yeah. these holidays yeah. are important for me and that I would you know put in extra hours on other days but I want these days off which is fine right yeah. but then it doesn't make you come across as like a culture manager or an right. office manager it just makes it look like you're taking care of yourself which is fine everyone should take care of themselves but then if you want to show them that that you're at that manager level then you gotta then then you gotta expand it beyond yourself right you should say and by the way I'm not the only person the only employee that feels this way I'm just the only one that's been able to 
be comfortable enough to talk about this with you. And it does affect the corporate culture um, that you are creating at your company. Everyone here wants to dedicate themselves towards the business, but we will all burn out if we don't get to spend time with our families and you will have high turnover. And then you will actually lose efficiency when you need to rehire new people, backfill people, train new people. It'd be far more efficient for you to actually retain your staff as opposed to have each of us burn out every three to six months, right? Okay. About all right. How about this example, which will probably... no, it's a, no, it's okay. Like I, I think I think you can use that example. Uh, yeah. I don't want you to give away too many of your examples right now because I got because I still got more questions. Okay. But okay. I think yeah. I think if you use the same example, but you can just add on what we just talked about, then it'd be perfectly fine. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah, and I want to save your examples because I got I got I got other questions coming up right here. Okay. Okay. No worries. So, um, Charisse, tell me about a time where you had multiple competing priorities and how you handled them. When I was the office manager at Barrett Kohler, I was thrown into the deep end. It was a very messy front desk. There was no systems in play. They had an old process book and binder in the back. Um, the board of directors needed help. The mailing and delivery wasn't really that organized. And um, there was no rules set in place for the kitchen. Um, it was very chaotic. However, I did take initiative by taking things one step at a time. I first studied the process guides and made them a little more clear for staff. I then created a mailing and inventory system where organized by each department. I then also created rules for the kitchen and cleaned it up on a daily basis and made the front office more presentable. I helped manage the mailing and delivery and I supported the board of directors. The way I did it was make a list of priorities rating from the most important to the least important. And I worked on each task at a time, but I also tried to remain an open ear to staff. So if someone needed a request, then I will help to take care of their needs. And now the front desk system is being used to this day. So in short, I created a step-by-step -step list. I helped um, expand the process guides and I really made sure to create an organizational system for the office. And that is how I manage competing priorities. And then what was the result of all of your hard work? The result was it was a very efficient like front desk off front office. The guests felt more welcome and the staff felt like they were helped. And it was organized in a way that they can work in the office and from home. I taught a lot of staff how to take care of their own packages and mail. And I made sure to keep the flow of the office going in both in both um, ways, adaptable in the office and working remotely. So everything was fantastic all the way up until we got to the result part, mm -hmm. right? So the result is not necessarily, or I, I should say that the result doesn't stop at, oh, I like th this was broken and then I fixed it. That's the result, right? The result is actually one step further than that, right? So for example, you, you, you said uh, the, the kitchen had no rules, right? It mm -hmm. was crazy. Right. So then uh, you establish some 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 rules for the kitchen, some guidelines. You cleaned it up every day, etc. So then what's what was the result of that? I don't know. Maybe before there were like two accidents a month where people were getting hurt in the kitchen, you know, uh, opening up the company to potential lawsuits. But now that we have all these new rules, processes and the kitchen is much cleaner. Uh, we've had zero workplace incidents and accidents where people get hurt in the kitchen, you know, for the last 30 days. You also talked about how you interacted with the board of directors, which is a obviously very important uh, role or, or, or an aspect of your role, right? And you said you got organized, um, you were able to document things and, and prioritize tasks, right? But then what's the step after that, right? What's what's the result, right? So maybe, you know, as a result of that, uh, the board of directors uh, were able to have more efficient meetings or the board of directors were able to meet twice a month instead of once a month. The board of directors, you know, gave me uh, some recognition. I won some type of award for helping them get, I don't know, right? Like there, there should be some super impactful, like, so what of, of, of all the amazing things 
that that you were able to do for them, right? Well, um, but sorry, the, the board of directors were able to manage their own tasks and meetings. They help needed someone to help them get organized, but then it got to the point that my services were no longer needed. They were able to take care of things on their own. That was the result. Okay. Then, 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 then that's also pretty good, right? Because then it shows that you uh, uh, optimized the process and then automated it in a way that it no longer became the front desk manager's responsibility and that gave you uh, more time to uh, work on other yes. uh, parts of your, your job, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, but for those of you who are watching, um, Sharice nailed the S and the T and the A. So when you are practicing your stories, you you want to do it just like she did. You want to set up that context, make your tasks very, very clear. But also in the actions part, you'll notice that she's showing off her skill set or whatever it is that it is for the role that you're applying for. So in this case, for um, an office manager position, you have to manage the front desk. You also have to handle a lot of the uh, logistics and like facilities components of the role. So she talked about we're doing stuff with the kitchen, doing stuff with the board of the directors, improving processes, updating process flows, um, running trainings, etc. So that's what made that part of her answer very strong. Cool. All right. Now we're going to get into a little bit of the harder questions now. Charisse, can you tell me about your experience managing onboarding processes or managing company culture? Um, sure. Um, when I was a project manager for, for 100K Treats for Humanity, the CEO and founder had a general onboarding process that he started but did not complete. Um, being new to the onboarding process, it entailed a lot of research and, um, gathering data. Um, what I did was I did the research portion first, and then from our research, I put the pieces together to create an onboarding guide. When I finished the onboarding guide, I um, sent it for finalization to the CEO and founder for feedback, and then I utilized it to help hire an intern to help with extra tasks for the company. Now, the intern works for 100K Trees, helping with extra projects and research. Okay, and what about company culture? Um, company culture, let's see. Um, so when I was an office manager at Barra Kohler, we wanted to emphasize um, training and development. For, um, for me, I helped to um, organize company trainings monthly by getting the materials together, creating... Um, like they had to speak wherever they needed it, like tech setup, tech cleanup and supplies. I made sure to get the supplies and have the tech set up and everything to run efficiently. And as a result, um, the company was able to have really good trainings to teach staff different thing, different skills within the workforce. Okay. All right. Um, now, this, I, I know that this will be difficult because, well, at least based on your resume, it, it, it's it's not like corporate culture or onboarding was like a big focus of your roles. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the the examples you shared um, are, are, are good ones, you know, given uh, the roles and responsibilities that you've had. Um, so the, the tricky thing with, with corporate culture, right, is it's, it's a, uh, Yes, it, it, it's about the activities and like the trainings and like the happy hours and the work parties and stuff like that. Uh, but culture also comes from like the, I guess, the environment or the values or the or the like mission and vision uh, for the company. And so you also want to make sure that that's a part of your story as well, because um, your story for, on, on the culture side focuses more on the execution of setting up trainings. Mm. Right. Um, which which is which is part of establishing a culture that uh, encourages learning. Right. So the culture, the, the value for the culture in this case is the company wants to create a safe environment um, and uh, 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 value education and upskilling and training for their employees. Right. That's the that's the company culture at the top. 
right? But in order to help do that, you help to facilitate, organize, and execute these trainings, right? right? But just make sure you're able to to draw that that distinction for for them as you're talking about corporate culture, which I know was not like a primary part of your role. So mm -hmm. we're trying to make you know make the best of the situation, right? It, it, in in a way, and so this would be the way to do it, right? You could say, well, at you know at that company, um, one of the corporate cultures that we were trying to establish was you know focus on education, upskilling, um, and uh, retaining our employees. And so in order to help do that, I facilitated and executed trainings as it related to X, Y, and Z. Now, again, though, the, the result part is still stopping early, right? And your result was we successfully executed trainings. Right. Right. So then it's, but then it's the so what, right? You executed the trainings. Why was that beneficial? Why was that helpful for the company culture, right? You could say, oh, we were able to execute, you know, quarterly trainings on new topics as it related to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, we had surveys done. I, I, I don't know if you did, right? But if you did, you could say we had surveys done at the end of each training. Uh, the overall satisfaction score from our employees was 97%. We also noticed that um, employees were, uh, I don't know, were, were staying longer at the company because they enjoyed getting these trainings and it was something unique that other companies and our competitors were not offering. Um, who knows, right? Or it's like, we also noticed that these trainings made our employees more productive. I don't know, right? But it's like, it's like the so what is the benefit of it, right? Because no company does anything just to do something, right? Companies right. do it to make money, save money in some way, right? Okay. So being able to connect those dots is also gonna make your story very powerful. Okay, so results. I don't know if they kind of research that. Um, I think that's one of the things that's holding me back is I talk about what I do, but I don't talk about the impact. I never really thought of it that way. But that's okay. That's why we're here and we're practicing. We're practicing. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. actually really good insight. I think I'm going to do a little research on that and try to figure it out for upcoming interviews. Yeah, excellent. All right, now let's try. This is going to be a little trickier of a question. This is a hypothetical. So imagine we hired you here at, what is this place called? Ubiquity Retirement and Savings as our office culture manager. So imagine you're already hired here. You're doing the job. Now, one of the responsibilities as our um, office and culture manager is that you would be also responsible for helping um, booking and organizing travel for some of our bigger events. So um, imagine that our five person executive leadership team needs to travel to New York for a conference and you're in charge of taking care of all of their travel arrangements for the five executives. Walk me through how you would handle this. Um, I would handle travel by first looking up the best, um, first figuring out the budget and how much each executive would require for their budget and their preferred flight. I would then, um, so communication will be key to organizing this. I would then research airlines and find the most um, feasible price for travel. After And after doing that, I will make sure to get the ticket, make sure that the executive is taken care of, and then help them to um, get their train. And then I'll organize. Then actually before pointing the flight, I will also look into hotels and living arrangements. Also, um, Uber and Lyft travel. So like really putting a budget together, then buying a ticket, um, booking the hotel and um, catering to your needs. And that's how I would book the travel. So it'd be like a process. So flight, hotel, um, transportation, and making sure that everything is paid off in advance based on the, on the government, I mean, based on the company budget. And this is how I would until travel. So it'd be a lot of research, communication, and making sure that we get to the end goal. So how would you handle it um, with our different executives? Let's say one executive doesn't like flying in the morning, only wants to fly in the afternoon. One of the executives only does red eyes. The other executive wants to leave a day early because his kid has a birthday party. And one of the executives, you know, um, 
needs to actually have a layover or isn't traveling all the way back to San Francisco? How would you handle all these different types of requests? I'll handle these requests by organizing them into a spreadsheet by each executive's needs. Um, I will then research the flights and the times and make sure that it coordinates to their schedule and preference and stay in close communication, ask questions, and be as transparent as possible to meet their needs. And what happens if these what happens if these requests actually put them out of budget? Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to adjust the budget then. Or I honestly don't know. And uh, so far in your uh, travel planning, you've covered flights and hotels mm -hmm. and, and transportation to and from. Uh, yes. Is there anything else for this conference that you think you would uh, be helpful to organize for our executives before they travel out there? Um, food accommodations, making sure that they have vouchers to their favorite restaurants. Um, making sure that there's like a convenience store close to them in case they may need an extra thing to help with an extra set of supplies for their stay. Um, my contact information in case they may need something extra would be some things to consider as well. Because Very good. you got to take care of flights, you got to take care of hotels and food accommodations because you don't want the executive to get hungry. And then you're hungry, they cannot focus. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, this is a tricky question. Uh, the reason why it's tricky is because like anything can happen, right? Um, and so, for example, uh, in the in the answer you gave, you assumed that you could accommodate any request that any executive gives you, right? And that's why right. when I asked you, well, what happens if these requests put you out of budget, which would be the complicated part of 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 planning this, right? It's not just like, oh yeah, you don't want to fly in the morning, no problem. You fly in the afternoon. Oh, you have to leave a day early for your kid, no problem, right? But right. in actuality, it doesn't always work like that, right? It could be like, no, you can't leave a day early. You need to stay the whole time because you need to give a speech on the last day of the conference. You can't be leaving early. So how do you handle that, right? Or it's like, no, you have to take the early morning flight because the budget only allows $300 for travel to New York. And you can't travel in the afternoon because all those flights are $400, right? Mm. So then how are you going to handle that awkward conversation? Right. So that's the other element of this that can make it very tricky. And you, the, the best way to answer these hypothetical questions is to try to give as comprehensive of an answer as possible, even though it's tricky because there's so many random things that could happen. But that's why anytime you can potentially predict a type of problem or obstacle you may run into in this imaginary scenario, that actually reduces follow up questions or tricky things that the hiring manager can ask you about, right? Right. And then the other piece too, um, you did very good on, on the air travel. You did very good on the hotel piece. Um, now the other thing, oh, and, and you also remembered to organize transportation, which is great. But the other piece, yes. um, not just organizing food individually, right? But typically if a, if a company is traveling for a conference, then you may have to organize like a team, like a team dinner, right? Or you may need to organize something for them to meet with their key clients. So you're going to have to organize maybe a big party, a big event. You're going to have to, I don't know, book out a restaurant for dinner for like 20 something people. Right. You got to make sure it's close to the venue. You got to make sure there's transportation to and from. Right. You got to make sure that the that the customer is going to the dinner feel mm -hmm. like they get a VIP service. Right. So that's the other element that you're going to also want to make sure you 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 account for whenever yeah. um, someone asks you about booking travel. Right. Okay. So like team building um client client meetings and so yeah. on Got yeah it. yeah and so that would also be the other part of your comprehensive answer right you could say well first you know first things first i'm going to take care of the logistics for our executives to get there execute on the conference but after i take care of that then i want to make sure that i meet with the ceo or the C cmo or the chief sales officer figure out do we need to plan any type of customer dinners Right. How many customers are we inviting? I got to make sure I book a, a venue big enough for everybody, arrange transportation. And then if you want to go above and beyond, right, you could say and then I can ask for budget to get to make cool goodie bags for our company to give to all of our key customers. Right. Give them some swag, maybe. So they mm -hmm. remember us, you know, like any little things like this you can sprinkle in was going to make people go, oh, wow, like we have to have 
Sharice on our team, she literally thought of stuff that I didn't even think of, right? Yeah, great. So those are all the questions that I had. I'm gonna copy these questions and email them over to you so you can practice them as well. Um, but yeah, that's everything I had. And uh, if anyone does want additional tips and tricks for interviewing, please do check out my YouTube channel. It's Career Shakers, all one word. I'll put that in the chat. And also check out the Albert's List YouTube channel as well. And if there's other uh, jobs that you are looking for, we've done like 83 or 84 other mock interviews. So do check Albert's List because there's probably a mock interview for whatever job it is that you're looking for. So Albert, back to you. All right. Perfect. Oh, thank you. And, and, yep. and thank you, Sharice. Everyone, round of applause. It was yeah, no, great work. Great work. It's always it's always something coming here because, you know, there's just this level of uh, nervousness and anxiety that, you know, comes with, you know, job interviews. But this is the gym. And so you come into the gym to practice so you can go out there and do the real thing. Um, so thank you, Therese, for coming and doing this. I think this is a great value to the folks who watched. And so for those of you who are here, uh, we do these every week, provided we have somebody to come and do them with. So if you're interested in doing a mock interview, please reach out. You know where to find me. And we wish you the best in all of your job search endeavors for the remainder of this week. And we'll see you at upcoming events as well. Thank you all so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.